How is it going? It's Roxio again. Uh, after this hiatus, I have basically been learning how to program for the past couple of months. So what I'm doing instead of my normal WoW videos and, you know, gaming videos and stuff like that, is I'm actually doing a series on teaching anybody who's willing to, you know, stay and listen for a while and watch for a while how to program using the Ruby programming language. Now, I'm going to be starting from the very basics. I'm talking like, I'm going to teach you how to use command line. I'm going to teach you about variable declaration, data types. You know, we're starting from the very, very foundational things that you need to understand programming. And we're working all the way up to advanced things. You know, basically we're going to be going through object oriented programming with Ruby. And we're going to be making a, basically like a little toy program. We're going to be making like a, a Tamagotchi pet type of, of a program by the end of this. So, I've always felt like building something with meaning that you know you can personalize and give it life make makes programming much more fun than just typing in some commands into a computer and go oh look it gave me the right terminal output you know what I mean um, so if you already kind of understand about variable declaration and how to use your command line and you know very basic like programming computer type stuff you can go ahead and skip to my later videos where I'll be going into more advanced Ruby stuff. But for now, let's go ahead and get this uh, get this guide going. So right here, we have the command line. Now, I'm using uh, Mac OS X, so my command line is probably going to look different than yours if you're a Windows user. But basically, well, most of the commands are the same, except for I think touch is different in uh, Windows. But I'll mention that when it comes up. So basically, navigating with the command line isn't archaic. I mean, you just have this, this black screen, right? Now, the computer's like, hey... What do you want me to do? Well, computer, I want you to do anything. I mean, try something. Okay, well, nothing's happening because I'm just telling it random stuff. Now, it's telling me command not found simply because it the computer literally doesn't know what I'm talking about. Just like we can't read whatever, whatever I just typed into the command line, the computer can't read it either. So what we basically need to do is get the computer something that it can listen to or that it can read, if that makes sense. So it knows the command ls. Oh, look, we got some options. Sweet. So what ls does is it's basically short for list. And what it means is it's going to list all of the current files in the directory that you're currently in. So this little squiggly line actually means I'm in my root directory. So if we want to navigate to, let's say, my desktop, all we got to do is cd, which stands for change directory, desktop. And now we're on our desktop. So how do we actually list the files again? Well, it's ls. So, oh, awesome. Now I can see all of the files on my desktop because we're in the desktop directory. You know, it's kind of like navigating around with, you know, you're in Explorer or using like your application thing down here. And I mean, Finder and uh, Mac OS X. So it's just a more efficient way of doing this. And you're going to need to know how to use command line to be able to run lots of different types of programs. And it's just a better tool to use than to use Finder and create stuff manually. So now that we're on desktop, you know how to move up a directory or basically go to a directory and you know how to list the contents of a directory. But what if you've gone too far in? Let's see. I'll navigate to my old DBC stuff real quick. And then I'll list it. Oh, there's a whole bunch of crap in here, but I don't, I don't want this anymore. Why would I want to be in here? Well, the way we go back to our desktop, we basically can go back a step by doing CD, period, period. And it basically, uh, um, the double period, in computer terms, means back one. Okay, so we're back on the desktop. So we can list, oh, look, we have all of our desktop files back. Okay, so if you've gone too far, you CD dot dot. If you want to go farther, you CD and then the name of the directory that you want to go to. That's That's basic command line. So we want to create a file folder now, right? Because we need some place for our program to live. So this is actually very easy. We don't have to go out here and, you know, go to go to new folder. We can just type make MKDIR, which stands for make directory. And then we'll just call it project, you know, and that'll make a folder. And as you can see, if we LS again, which stands for list, our project showed up right here. If you can see the uh, red highlighting that I just did on it. So we can go ahead and navigate to that using CD. Pro, and if you hit tab when you have something typed in, your OS will look for different things. Now, as you can see, I have two things that start with pro. I have a prototype.rb and a project. So that just means, okay, I'll just type a J, and oh, then I hit tab again, and all of a sudden the computer knows what I'm talking about, right? All right, so now we're in project. But if we ls in a project, oh, there's nothing there. So... Instead of going into the actual file folder and like making just like manually making a new file, 
at least on Mac OS X, you can do touch, and then we'll do um, project.rb, because we're going to be using Ruby. Now, before I make this file, I want to make something a little bit clear. This little .rb thing after project is called a file extension. And what it does is it basically lets the computer know what type of file that you're going to be running. And this is very important later, because, you know, there's a difference between a CSS file or a JavaScript file and a Ruby file. So for this instance, we're just going to be creating a Ruby file with the name of project, basically. All right, so it should be created if we ls. Oh, look, our project is inside of this directory. So that's that's basically how you navigate through and kind of and kind of get your uh, kind of get your, uh, your your like development suite set up. You can just create a bunch of folders and you know you can get all this stuff automated later. Like you can actually write programs to do all of this stuff and it's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and actually get into some Ruby stuff. So now we're inside a project. We don't need to really open up the the Ruby stuff right now. Um, go ahead for me real quick before you do anything. Go ahead and type Ruby dash v and hit enter now if you're on a macintosh operating system you'll more than likely already have a version of ruby installed um, if you're on a windows operating system or a linux operating system you should just do a quick google search figure out how to install ruby if i remember correctly the windows version you actually need to install and then restart your computer um, it, it shouldn't be too hard to install it's it ruby's pretty ruby's pretty um ruby's pretty nice actually you know what I'll put a link to a little guide down here that's simple to follow. Uh, it should be showing up on the screen here in just a moment, and it'll be in the description. All right, so now that we have Ruby installed, um, let's go ahead and start playing around on it. So when you have it installed, from anywhere on, on your computer, you can just type IRB. And what IRB stands for is Interactive Ruby. Basically what we're doing is we're telling the computer, okay, I just want, I want to mess around on Ruby. It's basically, it's an interactive version of Ruby where you can just do Ruby code without saving it in a text file. So everything that we do in here, like let's say, let's make a string of high. High is saved in the computer's memory, basically. Um, but all this isn't going to matter right now because you don't need to you don't need to learn about like memory space and all this other stuff until you're you're more advanced at programming. So I'm going to basically be explaining to you guys now what the difference between a string, a fixed num, or an integer, and nil is. These are three huge data types, um, just for the fundamentals of programming. Well, not nil. Nil is actually Ruby specific, but I'll get into that later. So right now, what I just typed up there for high is actually a string. Anything inside of quotes um, is basically what a string is. Is a string is a chain of characters that like essentially makes up sentences in the computer's memory. Is a good way to think about it. But they're always in double or single quotes. Like we can do hello world. You know that old that old standby <laughs> computer example. Hello world, and it returns hello world. All right, awesome. So that's a string, and an integer is just a number. You know, it can be you know anything we pretty much want it to be. Um, and nil is actually an interesting little concept. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of variable declaration here, and I'll kind of show you what nil does here in just a moment. So okay, so we have a variable. Let's just call it um, let's call it dog is equal to, I don't know, we'll call it scruffy or something like that. Oops. All right, so now we have a variable of dog equal to scruffy. So every time we call dog, it's going to return scruffy. But scruffy spelled wrong, just just scurfy. There's there's no vowels in scruffy's name except for the the, the y at the end. So he uh, he's a, he has a very unique name. But the the thing about scruffy is we can actually redefine what he is. So, oh, we messed up scruffy's name. We can just redefine dog, so every time we call dog, it actually gives us the right Scruffy. Uh, it actually outputs the right version of Scruffy. That's basically just overriding our old variable. Because remember how I said that where this is all being done on the computer's memory? That That's the truth. The computer remembers what the variable is called, and every time you call dog, it'll say, oh, you said dog? I'm going to give you back Scruffy. That's basically, that's basically how variables work. Um... So we can even do the same thing for fixed numbers. We'll call it number equals 8. Okay, so now every time we call number, it's going to give us back 8. Same concept. Um, the only main difference between integers and strings is that you can't really combine integers and strings together. Like, I'll show you what I mean. We'll do a little bit of math right here, or attempt to do a little bit of math. Because if we do, like, dog 
plus number, it's going to tell me no implicit conversion of fixed num into string. Now, why is that? That's mainly because Scruffy, the dog, is a string and number is an integer. How much sense does it make for you to say, I want to do Scruffy plus eight? It doesn't make sense, does it? It's That's essentially how it works. Now, if you, you were using JavaScript, it'd be completely different, but we're not even going to talk about JavaScript because JavaScript is weird. Um, but that's a, that's essentially how some of these, these different um, data types work. Now, one more data type I'm going to mention right now is nil. Nil is kind of weird. It basically stands for nothing. So if we do like, um, let's call it ver var for variable equals nil, it's going to do this. And every time we return variable of nil, it's going to be nil. It basically means that that, uh, that that property has nothing attached to it. It's basically just kind of like, um, I don't want to say it's entropic, but it's I'm not really exactly sure how to explain it. It's Ruby's concept of there being nothing there at all, is, a, is I guess is the good way to explain it. So, with that being said, we can't do we can't do five plus nil, just like we can't do you know we can't do like dog plus nil, because nil isn't actually like a, a value. It's just it's basically nothing in Ruby. So if you start seeing errors say like, oh nil can't be you know whatever it means that something is missing basically. Um, that might be important to remember for later. But I also want to show you some of the very like basic arithmetic like operations you can do in Ruby. So just like earlier when we can't add Scruffy plus eight, we can add like eight plus eight. I mean it's programming. I mean it's just computers doing computer stuff. So, okay, awesome, we were able to do 16. But you can also do something called string uh, string concatenation, which is basically pushing two strings together. So let's say we have Scruffy. Oops. Scruffy. So we'll end that string, and then we'll do another string, and then we'll put a space, the dog. And this should work. See? And then it'll print out Scruffy, the dog. And you can even do this with variables of the same type. So what do we say? It could be dog... Oh, we'll actually do this. We'll, um, then we'll say title equals the dog. So then we can do dog plus title, and it'll give us back Scruffy the dog. Now, I might have gone too fast. So basically what this is doing is we set two different strings to variables, and then we concatenated the strings together. And what I mean by concatenation is we basically added them together and made them into their own individual new string. That is that is kind of as simple as I make it sound because you know they're basically they're basically like kind of like they're sentences in all reality they're just sentences I mean because we could even you know we could do this number plus this number and it'll give us back whatever that is and it's the same thing with with strings they're just they're just things you can operate with and that's something that I didn't really understand when I started beginning programming so I hope I made it more clear for some of you guys. Um, of course, I'd love feedback on these videos. I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. And next in the series, we're going to be going over some, you know, very like basic Ruby programming stuff. If you really want to mess around with the IRB stuff, go for it. Go crazy with it. You can't break it. So uh, have fun. And hmm, I think that'll be it. The new guides will be coming out pretty soon. All right. It was awesome. Uh, so comment, rate, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.